How's it going everybody? Welcome back to My Gardening Habit. I'm Rob Mayer and today we're going to talk a little bit about the blight issues that I'm having in the greenhouse. Last week we talked about a few different ways that I was trying to combat that. Increasing my airflow, uh, spraying with an organic fungicide, and also putting a small dehumidifier in the greenhouse to try to you know, keep down the humidity and see if we can't stop this thing. Uh, I came out here the other day and it seems like we are still having some major issues with the with the blight the the first time that i had sprayed and increased the air temperature it seemed to help a little bit and now it seems like we've hit another point where uh, what i've done just isn't helping i'm noticing all over in here that there's little leave you know some newer leaves that are starting to show up with early signs of it uh, some of the stems of the plants are actually starting to show up with it too so today i'm going to try to trim out a lot of the extra leaves that are in here see if we can't increase the help again to increase the airflow but also to get rid of the blight that is already in here and look to try to keep it from spreading to the other plants or the other leaves that are in here so if you look here see on this stem here I still have some that's forming I don't really want to trim the whole stem out because I'm gonna lose most of my plant that way so I'm gonna try rubbing some of the fungicide right on it or directly spraying it maybe but the leaves that are showing signs of it I'm just gonna go ahead and trim right out and see if that does it So while I want to focus on trimming out the leaves that are clearly already infected with the blight, I also want to try to trim out some of the excess leaves that are in here. These tomato plants don't need all of these leaves and what's actually happening is it's decreasing the airflow through here and it's going to give more of a, uh, give the plants more susceptibility to the fungus. So I'm going to try to clear some, some more of this out. Uh, Again, I'm focusing on the leaves that already clearly have the blight, and then if I see ones that really just aren't needed, that are just kind of in the way, I'm going to try to trim that, them out also.
So after trimming out all those tomato leaves, at this point we have a rather large pile of tomato leaves down here. They're overflowing from my bucket. Um, in the past, I've always gone ahead and tossed all this into the compost, but from what I've heard, the best thing to do is actually just get rid of it, throw it in the trash, because uh, as you put those spores back into the compost, then you're gonna have more of a risk of having tomato blight on your actual uh, crops out in the soil garden. So I don't like throwing anything like that away because I love the compost, but if it can help me from getting blight in the garden, I guess it's what I'm gonna have to do. So. <clears throat> So I know it looks like I was basically indiscriminately going through and just cutting off leaves at random. For the most part, I was. Like I said, I, I'm trying to target the leaves that clearly have blight because I want to try to get that out of the greenhouse so that the spores can't continue to spread. In going through and clearing all that out, I'm sure me doing that is stirring up spores and they're getting on the rest of the plants. So. I'm going to make another attempt to spray with the fungicide, uh, try to see if that'll help. Uh, again, the increased airflow with the lack of leaves that we now have, although you can see it still looks like a jungle. I basically went through on every vine and uh, only left a few small branches with leaves at the very top of the vine. Uh, I've read before that you don't necessarily need to leave a lot of leaves on the tomatoes. They can deal with just some leaves at the very top of the vine. So we'll see how that works out. Basically at this point, I'm just doing whatever I can to save these tomato plants. I've got a ton of flowers in here and a ton of potential tomatoes. I'd really like to not lose all of them, but if I do, I do. I didn't expect to have tomatoes this far into the winter at this point. It's the last week of January and I still have tomatoes. So that's awesome. I wasn't expecting that. It's been a lot of upkeep with them, so I'm not terribly upset if they go away. But while they're here, I'm going to continue to try to do whatever I can to, to see if I can fight this and maybe learn from my issues with the the blight see what I can do maybe next year or in a different situation so it's getting kind of dark out here so before I finish up I'll just talk real quick about uh, a couple of other things that we have the Before I wrap it up for this video, I'll just talk about a couple more things that we have going on. Last video, I talked about the, uh, the automatic feeder causing a high particulate count in the water, so probably uh, just suspended particulates, little fine pieces of food that are being ground up by the auger inside of the automatic feeder. So I had it set up for feeding two times a day, and Basically, I didn't ever have to come in here and feed the fish. Everything was going great with that, and that's awesome. But the problem that I'm finding is that the water was dark and cloudy. Uh, I went ahead and canceled out the second. Went ahead and canceled out the second feeding of the day on the automatic feeder, and within three or four days, that pretty much cleaned up a good portion of the cloudiness. It's still a little cloudy, but not nearly as it was. It looked like nasty, uh, some nasty scummy water last time we were here. So again, I've at this point gone ahead and canceled out the automatic feeder completely. And I'm just gonna try to deal with feeding by hand. I'm gonna have to try to get out of here before work in the morning and as soon as I get home, try to come out, but we'll see. I believe that cutting out the automatic feeder totally is going to really clarify the water, but yeah. in the event that we're going on vacation or something like that, uh, 
I'm not going to get out here for a few days and I know it, I can turn on the automatic feeder and not have to worry about it. But if I want to keep the water a little bit clear, I'm going to have to do it by hand, I think. So we'll see next week, I'd say, see if this has really cleared up the water anymore. But so far, just cutting out the automatic feedings, uh, you'll see here that it, it clearly has cleared up. So it's tough to see with the glare, but you can clearly see there are fish in there. They are happy and healthy. Still don't think that they're too keen on me, but they are not hiding. So that's a good thing. Nothing big. I'm gonna toss a little food in, see if they want to come up. So the last thing I want to talk about is the bell siphon. Uh, I had been making a video before about the issues that I was having it. I haven't put it out yet, but uh, just to show you. I was having issues with the bell siphon previously where it just did not want to initiate a siphon and drain out. You can see the water sitting there at the top. Oh, it's starting to go down right now. So. The thing that I did most recently after reading on the aquaponics forum for Facebook is I added this 90 degree turn into here. Some of the guys are saying that you actually need a little bit of back pressure to initiate the siphon. So it seems to be helping. Uh, I haven't had a problem since, but then again, every other thing that I've tried with the bell siphon. I don't have a problem for days, sometimes weeks, after making a change to it, and then all of a sudden uh, I have some sort of problem that I just it seems like it's hell to get through. So this seems to be the latest thing. It seems to be going well. Um, yeah, and yeah, I'll definitely be sure to cover that in my my review of the bell siphon video or whatever it is that I do with that. Quick run through of what we have grown at the moment. As I said before, we've got a ton of flowers, and you can see them on the tomato vines. They just keep on coming in here, just giving them a little tickle, trying to get them to pollinate and produce some more tomatoes. And see some little, see some little baby tomatoes forming on here. So, if I can just keep the blight from killing these for a little while, I'd be happy. So, over here, we've got some dill that seems to be uh, not doing so hot. The, the This little tapper here is a little leggy, so the whole thing seems to be just kind of hanging out here. Uh, the lettuce that I've direct seeded into here doesn't really seem to be taking it off. It started to be a little leggy and then just kind of falling over. Uh, I think I need to worry a little bit more about what nutrients I have in the system. Um, I don't really check the water chemistry as much as I should. I need to pay a little bit more attention to that for sure. Back here you see the ginger that I planted starting to take off pretty nicely. I think I may have one problem with the ginger that I think it's going to be a little bit taller than is acceptable for the greenhouse here. So I don't really know how long that's going to last, but it's a little experiment just to see if we can go in here. So, over here, last time I was talking about the dragon's tongue beans. Uh, it turns out that these are apparently a bush bean. I didn't know that. so. Just planting one isn't really going to do much. I might get a couple beans out of it. I could probably fill this whole bed with them, and that would work out fine. I see some 
some flowers on here. So maybe we'll get some beans here soon. And some more ginger. Seems to be coming along okay. More dill in the back. I think the last time, I don't know if I corrected it in the video, but the last time I might have said that it was parsley. And this wasn't sure what it was, if it was cilantro or parsley. And it's parsley, for sure. So, things are coming along. That's it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I want to thank you again for stopping by. Uh, if you'd like to help support my gardening habit, please like and share the video. Maybe hit the subscribe button or the also the little bell for notifications. And check us out on our website, mygardeninghabit.com, or on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.